Hi guys and gals, Froggy here. What I'm going to show you today is how to uh, replace a right rear wheel bearing on a C5 Corvette. And if you're going to do that, you already know how to jack up a car, put it on jack stands, and you know how to remove the wheels. So I'm not going to show you that part. Let's start with the caliper. Uh, I'm going to remove this uh, caliper first and the caliper bracket. And uh, I'll, uh, I'm, I'm not going to show you every time I turn the wrench, but I'm going to show you the steps, okay? That's a 15 millimeter socket and an 18 millimeter open end to hold the uh, that sleeve has a little nut fitting on it uh, that the caliper pin slides in. Now let's get the bracket off. The uh, caliper bracket is 21 millimeter. You're probably going to need a breaker bar unless you're really strong. Uh, you'll need a breaker bar to uh, to get it off and there's my big breaker bar there. What what that means in order to swing the breaker bar, you got to have the back the center of the axle is almost two feet up in the air. So get the rear end of the car way up high so that you can swing the breaker bar on those nuts. Okay? Or else you can get an air gun in there if you go in there and you'll probably need like a little universal on it but uh, I just I do it from the outside here it's it's only two bolts so it's not that bad now I can take the, the rotor off it should come right off there's our wheel bearing and to put the wheel bearing on you've got to take the knuckle off the this is this is the knuckle or the corner here and the, the wheel bearings attached on the back side with three three big star bolts um, so the way I take this off this the last the, the upper and lower ball joints the axle and this tie rod end are the four things that hold the knuckle on. Uh, so I usually take the top one off first, then this tie rod end, then the axle, and then I can just pull pull it off the axle enough to get at the lower one. The lower one has got a really hard nut to get to. Uh, so let's try that. You'll need to unclip your wheel speed sensor. That's that's it right there. And it goes right up there. And make sure your parking brake is off. And then just take a little screwdriver or something and you should be able to take the end of this. This is a, there's a slot and a little hook. You should be able to wiggle that off of there with the parking brake, up, brake off. There, you see, I just took a screwdriver and wiggled it off. The uh, parking brake bracket is held on by two 15 millimeter bolts, so just take those two 15 millimeter bolts out. You, they're not on too tight. You can just use a box end to get in there, and then this will come completely out of the way. I'm going to get this rod end loose. I, I'm not going to take it all the way off yet. I might or I might not, but sometimes I need to swivel the knuckle around. Uh, so it's it's a 19 millimeter on on mine. I've got a a um, bump steer kit on here, so yours might be different. Uh, okay, just so you know. This tool is a ball joint separator. Once you get the nut loose, the ball joint will still be stuck. It's it's a tapered fit, and it'll still be stuck. I know a lot of mechanics just beat on this. Um, with a hammer and it pops loose you can do that but this is aluminum alloy it's not steel so if you beat on this you're gonna yeah, that just popped loose did you hear it? I think you heard the pop um, I only had a little bit of tension on it 
But what this does, instead of using a pickle fork, a pickle fork is, uh, well, let me see if I've got This is a ball joint separator, or commonly called a pickle fork. You just hammer that in where, where this piece is right here. The trouble with those is they can possibly tear up this rubber boot, and if you tear up the rubber boot, then your grease is all going to go away, and then you'll be replacing a ball joint. Um, so this is a really nice tool. I would pick one up. They're cheap and uh, they work pretty good. Some of these you won't be able to get a socket on. This one, this one I guess I could, but alternate between your open end and your socket if you need to. Use the socket to break it loose and then, uh, um, then use, use an open end or a box end to finish it. Before you take the axle nut off, stick a piece of wood through your wheel on the opposite side so that'll jam up jam it up so you can um, so you can put some uh, some tension or some so you can take the nut off otherwise this is just going to spin one and five sixteenths will uh, will fit the nut although it's it's a millimeter size uh, I don't know it's 40 40 something but a one and five sixteenths will get it off the, for some reason the millimeter size is a little bit hard to find, but I found the SAE size okay. There's a little shot of this coming off. Actually, it came off pretty easy. I, uh, I'm sure I torqued it up to the right torque spec, which is oh, in the ballpark of 160 pounds so I don't know came off a little bit easy there you go maybe it was that penetrating oil now I've, I've got to get this yeah you know, I've got this loose this loose this loose so I got one to go and I've got to turn this quite a lot to get in there I don't know if I can get in there without um, taking this top off uh, I'm gonna try and get in there and if I can't, what I'm going to do is jack up with a bottle jack here, raising this up and keeping this arm down so that this will this will actually pop out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have to pop it out of there the way I just described. Then I can get this off the axle. Then I can get at the last little ball joint. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, watch up here. I think it's in the shot, and then you'll see that this whole knuckle is going to go up, and and I'll be able to get free of that. Now you may be lifting the car off of your jack stands, so be aware of that. Okay, see how loose I've got that now? Now, now I can get that axle out. And then I'll get to my last ball joint. Uh, I'm going to let this down so that it's more secure on my jack stands. Yeah, it's off the jack stand on this side. So just be careful under the car. I've got two jack stands, plus my floor jack is there in the middle. Okay, that's out of the way now. I've got a 21 millimeter socket and I'm going to get this lower ball joint out. Right now it's not turning. There is a place for an Allen wrench in the top if it starts turning on you. You know, if the whole thing thing starts turning in here, um, you might have to cut the Allen down to get it in there. I don't know. It's kind of a tight squeeze, but 
this is what I'm going at now and then maybe the axle will last I don't know I'll tell you when I get there well I kept shoving the axle in and pulling the knuckle out and also angling the knuckle as much as I could either way and I finally I remember this angle when you need to go to put it back together I finally got it out the threaded part is all the way clear there you can you can see that's out so now I just got to work on breaking this bottom loose and I'm, I've got the knuckle out take a bungee and tie the axle up out of the way so you can work on this bottom ball joint now this is how I broke the bottom one loose uh, just flip your ball joint separator around it was a little tight this is a bigger ball joint on the bottom so this tool is a little bit small in its dimension but I, I hammered it on without damaging the rubber and then uh, tightened up on it and I did beat a little bit on each side just a little and uh, it's now it's loose there you can see it's loose okay let me just show you oh, let me do a close up on this see the tool is is kind of jammed onto the ball joint but it's a place where it's not going to matter to anything and you can see that I cleared the rubber so the rubber is fine the rubber is not damaged I just got to I think I need to just uh, open up that opening on the ball joint with a grinder or something maybe an eighth of an inch and then I'll be able to get this this ball joint easy anyway there you go knuckles off and now we're going to take it to the bench there's your three star bolts that hold the uh, bearing on okay now frog is going to take a little lunch break I uh, just have a couple of thoughts before I take that uh, to my bench and change out the wheel bearing it could very well be if you can get that lower ball joint apart that the axle can be the last thing to come out but as I showed you you can do it with the axle being the third piece and then that ball joint being the last piece so if uh, you guys have successfully don't give me any theoretical stuff if you've actually done it where the axle is the last one um, post up a comment and tell me about getting that lower ball joint off and free okay now let's uh, change the bearing out these are <clears throat> Torx 55 and uh, I always use a breaker bar to get them off I I think they're all the same although one of them as you can see it's recessed so we'll take a look at that when they come out this is how I do it I put the these two long long legs down and put my hand on one and then my long breaker bar on the other one and that's usually enough uh, leverage to do it there you go they're all the same length this one near the um, wheel speed sensor had some Loctite on it I think when I put them all back in I'm going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on there but the most important thing is to torque them to the right spec disconnect the, <clears throat> the wheel speed sensor uh, there's a little uh, little white mark that I put an index mark uh, where the knuckle lines up on the backing plate for the parking brake just so it goes back easy then I put a little white dot there the white dot is where the wheel speed sensor lines up with the backing plate and you see that white dot there and then there's my white dot on my new one so that all has to go back correctly and there you go <clears throat> the old one is the new one now you got to take this little white plastic thing off that's just holding the wheel speed sensor so it doesn't get damaged well the guys at the parts store are throwing the boxes around um, anyway I've got to um, change the uh, studs out as you can see I've got ARP studs on the old one and the new one comes with OEM equipment uh, 
so I, I've got another video of how to change studs so I'm not going to show you that again just to keep this one short and sweet um, basically you, you run a nut on here and then you knock it out with a hammer just knock it out and then to put the new one in you put it through and then you put a bunch of flat washes a really lot of flat washes like 20 or 25 of them and then you gun the nut back on and it pulls it in it works perfectly uh, don't try to press them in, pull them in. Pull them in is much better. Okay, I'm going to change that out. And like I said, I have another video, so you can search for that other video under Corvettes if you want to see how to do um, studs. Okay? Here's just a little quick uh, setup. Take a block of wood, put that ear right down there, see where it's got an impression there on the wood, and then just hammer on these. Yeah, that one's loose already. Just hammer on that. Put the nut on there. There you go. Just like that. All out. Okay, now I'm ready to put the ARP studs in the new one. And when you, you look at this bearing, it has a little bit of resistance when you twist it. You can't really rock it like I was doing when I, um, I showed you what a bad wheel bearing was. Uh, but this is definitely worn outside of its design parameters, so that's junk. Okay, I guess I am basically showing you how to change the studs. The, uh, the studs have little splines on them, and the hub has splines on them, so spline to spline. When you put it in, before you start with your impact wrench, there, I told you there's a lot of washers before you start with your impact wrench just turn it and you can feel it when the splines line up correctly it's like clicks it's like just trust your feeling and they're they will kind of self align themselves but give them a little help to begin with and then just uh, draw it you're just drawing it on with the drill with the, with the uh, half inch impact drive all right, just like this. See that? It's all the way in. Now, when you uh, when you torque your lug nuts down, you need to recheck them after a, you know a day or so, or a few days, um, because you might need to retighten these. Okay, just a heads up. Okay, there's our dot to dot, little white dot to little white dot, so we know that's lined up good, uh, the new one. And the torque spec on these is 96 pounds. And I'm going to put some blue Loctite, maybe a dot of red Loctite. And the red is more permanent and I believe more high temperature, so I kind of made my own little formula there of a little bit of red and mostly blue. Mostly the thing is to get them to 96. Okay, so the backing plate, then the knuckle, the, the corner, and then the bolts. And you can see that this this is going to line up okay. I've got my straight lines there, and my dot is underneath now. Okay. These three are all the same. And that one's recessed to, to clear the ball joint. So I'm going to just start these finger, finger tight to get them all going. Like that. And then I'll show you when I crank them down to 96. Here's my torque wrench, and I'll show you the angle I'm using. Again, spread the, the two long legs. And then I'd like to take off a little bit on each one, like you're doing, you're torquing down the head bolts. Um, but get it up to 96. Oh, Ferragi's breathing heavy. I actually went up to 100 because I've got a little extension on that. A reducer from half inch to quarter inch drive so 
anytime you put universals or extensions or anything in there you're you're taking away some torque from the wrench so I put it up to 100 anyway she's good I'm gonna take a break now and then we'll put it back together well going back on was uh, pretty easy uh, just take the upper control arm lift it way up out of the way it'd probably stay up there by itself and then I took, I, I loosened up my axle, remember I had it tied up with a uh, bungee cord. I put the lower ball joint and the axle sort of, sort of at the same time, just uh, both of them going on at the same time. And, uh, and there it is, it just went right on. Uh, so now I've got to torque up that bottom ball joint first actually shoot I hope I don't have to take that I think I'm gonna have to take that axle out again so I can get a torque wrench on that bottom one but that's no big deal because this is very loose already yeah that's what I'm gonna do guys and gals I'm gonna I'm gonna take the axle out I'm gonna torque the bottom ball joint and let me get the bottom and the top ball joint uh, torque spec the lower goes to 52 and the upper goes to 41 uh, so let me do that let me get that axle back out of there and I'll do the lower and when you put this back together you get the axle up out of the way it should be clean and dry um, you know I don't think you'll ever find any rust on there but if you do clean it off with a like a green scotch bright pad and because it has to have some grip when you tighten it down otherwise it'll spin around and that's why they have an allen uh, wrench hole in the top so let's put this on and go to 52 so that's a uh, an allen there six millimeter and then you can see how I can I can hold the ball joint from twisting while I turn the nut down it's a self-locking nut and then when it gets settled down onto its cone shaped uh, seating area then you don't need this allen anymore so that was uh, a 21 on the nut and the allen yeah. the allen is a, a six millimeter now what I did to be able to torque that down to 52 was I just caught this uh, tie rod end just to hold to hold this knuckle in place so that I can otherwise the whole knuckle would just twist around so I can I can take this out now okay to get the axle back in I made the angle was up here like towards the front of the car like a very sharp angle there's a universal joint inside here CV joint and then I got the threaded part of the axle started through here so now it's in the hole um, so I'm there and make sure you inspect this boot and uh, that it doesn't have any uh, tears or rubs or because um, <laughs> now would be the time to change this if you need to change this so you don't have to go through all this okay you follow me good okay we got our axle in I can uh, I put that I'll start putting that nut on now but I don't I think I'll wait until I've got some more parts connected before I put uh, the torque spec and I gotta look that up for you put your bottle jack under the lower control arm and that'll help you get that catch that upper ball joint into the upper control arm otherwise it's it's a real it's a real push to get it in there but if you just take a take about a half an inch or an inch off up you'll be fine let me just call your attention to this customized uh, bump stop that I made. It, uh, it's in another video, but since you're looking at this, you can check that out too. The original rubber one was getting chewed up by those, those big nuts down below because it's soft rubber. So I cut those plastic nylon uh, flat washers and just slipped them around it's a half si half inch inside diameter but you can get whatever size you need for your shock and then it uh, it helps uh, prevent that chewing up of the 
soft rubber bushing. Okay, top is torqued to 41. And what we got left here is tie rod end, the speed sensor, the parking brake, the brake caliper bracket, the brake caliper, and we're almost there. So I might speed up a little bit now. You guys and gals should uh, know how to do the rest of it. And the stock outer tie rod end stud nut goes to 33. This one is a little bit bigger. So I'm putting it at uh, 38. Feels about right. We get the bottle jack out of the way. I think we're done with that. And here's a little tip. Put the parking brake bracket back on before you or before you put this tie rod in, in there because you need about an extra quarter inch of space. It's a long bolt and uh, I had to undo this to get it in. The bottom one anyway. The top one goes in okay but the bottom one. Let me show you. This bottom one right here. It's, it's long and you need to turn the turn the hub just a little bit to get it in there and then you can do this one up. Okay, parking brakes all back, wheel speed sensor connected, tie rod end connected, torqued, torqued, torqued. I didn't do the axle nut yet. Uh, let's do that. Let's do the axle nut and then we're down to the brakes. Okay, 118 pound feet is what it says in the factory service manual for the drive axle spindle nut. So let's go 118. Well, I'm going to have to wait till I get the tires, uh, the wheels on the ground because uh, the limited slip differential is uh, breaking loose, which it's supposed to do at about 100 uh, pounds. So. Uh, we'll make a note to finish that up later on. We get the rotor on and uh, then the caliper bracket. Caliper brackets on to 125 pounds and Loctite. Uh, now the caliper. Caliper bolts to 23. Put some Loctite. Okay, guys, gals, this is it. You can put the wheel back on, right? So. That's an installation of a wheel bearing on the right rear corner of a C5 Corvette. And if that helps you out, give me a thumbs up. Click on the subscribe button. Uh, if you want to see more from Froggy, I'd be happy to uh, do some more. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find it helpful, useful, and so on. So, uh, see you later. I'm done. You're going to pick up the tools and clean up and uh, put the wheel back on and let her down. Froggy's out. Bye-bye.